Afternoon everybody, Rich here, back for another video for the Diecast F1 review. Here today is the Scuderia Toro Rosso STR1 from the 2006 Formula 1 World Championship and in the car is Tony Oliuzzi. Now the Toro Rosso team started off life as the Minardi team, the most famous backmarkers of Formula 1 history, uh, but after several years of budgetary issues and not achieving very much, Paul Stoddard decided to finally cut his losses and sell the team to Dimitri Mateschitz of uh, Red Bull. And the team was rebranded as Scuderia Toro Rosso for 2006, uh, which still stands today and um, is not doing too bad actually, uh, well up to 2015 by the way. Um, but the Toro Rosso team started off life as, well, basically when Menardi le uh, left off as a back of the, back of the uh, grid team. Uh, but using the previous years, the 2005 chassis, which was well, 2005 Red Bull chassis, there was a rule at the time, which I think it still stands today, but uh, a, a, a design or a chassis designed by a team which no longer exists can be used by another team or something like that. I don't know what the, how the uh, rule is interpreted or at least how to explain it anyway. Um, it's probably interpreted better than how I explained it anyway. Um, but yeah, the Toro Rosso was basically a repainted and slightly modified uh, version of the 2005 Red Bull chassis, which in turn wasn't a bad chassis. Uh, I think Jaguar cut their losses a bit too, a bit too soon with that one there, but uh, hey ho, never mind. The uh, 2005 Red Bull was an alright car, but uh, going into 2006 it was clear to see that the car was a little bit out of date, and also the team was using the uh, Cosworth engine from the previous year, a Rev Limited V10 engine. Um, and it, it caused a lot of, or caused a bit of a stink at the time, or at least going into the season, that it wasn't fair, and because the uh, Cosworth engine, the V10 version, was uh, allowed only for the Minardi team, Minardi team of course being swallowed up into Red Bull, so the con, well, the the agreement didn't really stand, but uh, Toro Rosso went ahead with it anyway. But going into 2006, uh, the, the season started off, well, not all that great but not all that bad either the team, the team was a midfield qualifier but going into the, well at least at the Australian Grand Prix the team did cause a bit of an upset when uh, one of the Toro Rossos overtook Michael Schumacher during the race and people started complaining that the V10 engine was overpowered at that point but uh, going through the season though as other teams upgraded their engines and the, Co and the Cosworth engine pretty much fell back the Toro Rosso team fell back as well only one point scored at the US Grand Prix throughout the whole season, although one point was scored at the Australian Grand Prix by Scott Speed but was demoted to, to ninth place and uh, lost out on the point. I think it was something to do with overtaking under a yellow flag, but uh, never mind there. But uh, the team, although not setting the world on fire in terms of performance, the looks of the car was something to behold. The uh, very nice looking livery of the car, which still stands to this day, although slightly modified, is a, a very nice uh, bit of artwork really. Um, but uh, enough about the car, let's talk about the model. Of course this is a, a, a Mini Champs model and I will just get on straight onto the paintwork uh, first thing. Now, the paintwork on this car, although very striking is just a decal on this car, it is just uh, a, well, an elaborate decal all over the car. But uh, very nice looking it is as well. So I'm a bit out of breath, I'm, the way I'm sat on the <laughs> edge of the desk here is a bit uh, iffy and I'm not doing myself any good but we'll look around the car here, got a chassis or inside, it looks like scratch marks but they're just uh, a very nice design of the paintwork along the side of the chassis very nice it is too along the sides there it's got the paintwork the uh, Red Bull all the way out over the rear of the bodywork Red Bull, have, well not Red Bull but Toro Rosso have reduced this uh, livery a bit so it doesn't cover them as much of the side pods as it did back uh, back in the day when this car was running The uh, the, the red ball just covers the mainly, or mainly the engine cover now. But to a good look around the back here, and very nice it is as well. And we'll turn the car around without falling over it. And have a look, nose on. And you can see it's definitely the red ball from the previous year. You can see the high nose and the droopy front wing. But the only real differences between this and the o the O5 Red Bull is the side pods. So you can see, well, not not very well, but the side pods on this car are sort of curving underneath, whereas the Red Bull side pods went straight down. They sort of updated this for the uh, the O6 car. And another thing with the O6 car between 
uh, the, the, well, the difference is with the airbox, but it's not as obvious uh, to see on this car, or at least on this model. But the real car had a smaller airbox for reducing the revs on the V10 engine. It's uh, not been uh, that one interpreted on the model, but uh, never mind. Let's have a quick turn around the other way. Let's have a look at the rear of the car. There's a nice paintwork there as well, or at least decal work. If I try and move up and view this way. You can see around the diffuser there, through the rear, over the rear wing, and you can see that real coke bottle shaped chassis, Got the uh, exhaust there, and a quick look in the cockpit there, got some detailing in the cockpit as well, although blurred out, but you can see the buttons on the steering wheel there, and the mirrors actually reflect something as well, you can actually see in the mirrors and see what they're reflecting, look over the top of the chassis, you can really see how much decal there is on this car, all the all the uh, flashes and streaks down the down the chassis are all just a large decal, as you can see. But uh, it's not a big issue. I mean, it is a very nice car as well. Let me quick zoom out again. So there we are. The full car in its full blemish, and the, the tripod on this camera is really starting to uh, give up the ghost. But, uh, there's a car. At the, more looking back at the car, or at the back of the car, and we turn the car around. And you're going to get a good side profile of the car. So a much higher nose than what you see today. I think it's the only Red Bull with a high nose. Or at least Toro Rosso. Because going into 2007, 2008, the, the, the nose dropped. Um, well they're saying that going from 2009 onwards, the uh, noses were very high. So look underneath. We've got the usual guff under here. We've got the uh, Toro Rosso STR1 Cosworth. And of course the PMA logo there and a bit of shit on the lens as well get that off but uh, yeah as you can see there and there's plenty of uh, add-ons of this car well not add-ons but you know all the funny winglets on the car so you've got the chimney there and the uh, small winglet attached to that and then the big scoop underneath the big grey thing there with the Michelin logo there of course a Michelin tired car plenty of detail there the driver figure is I can't really tell how well painted it is, because it's quite a tight comp uh, cockpit, but uh, it does look pretty good in there. Because the seat belt's covering up most of the detailing of the uh, colour scheme. And you can, you can see once again from this angle the, uh, the decal on the top of the chassis. It's quite an obvious one, but uh, it's no big issue. Like I said, it is a very nice car as well. One of the rarer Toro Rossos as well. I think there were, there were uh, three Toro Rossos made all together and the 08 and 09 car are the ones that come up most often. The 06 car, which this one is, is quite a bit rare. It did, did become very rare. I think the first few years of this the car, of this car's release, it was so rare that you had to pay you know, nearly two, three hundred pounds for it. Some people did. It's just ridiculous how limited these uh, limited numbers of this car were. And I think it's still pretty rare today. But the prices are a bit vague. I think people are sort of cottoned on to the fact that you don't need to pay ridiculous amounts of money to pursue a hobby. Um, just don't pursue the hobby. <laughs> That's the only thing I can uh, say. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a funny one, really. It's, it's it's a car that doesn't come up very often, whether on eBay or various websites as well. It's it's sort of an enigma. This car. It took a while for it to be released as well. I don't think it was until 2008 that this car was actually released. But uh, yeah, it had a lot of demand for it because of the colour scheme. And I suppose they had to delay the production just to get the colour scheme right. Cause, I mean, this this whole area is, a, is one big decal, and uh, it really does stand out quite nicely. So Toro Rosso did win some. Well, yeah, they won quite a few awards, I think, for, the, for their colour scheme. But it's such a shame that they haven't really, you know, changed it much. Well, they changed it a little bit, but they haven't really gone further with the uh, the colour scheme. They could have done a lot more uh, with things, but uh, yeah, it's up to them what they want to do. So we have another quick look around the car. So we go towards the rear wing. So you've got the give me wing, or gives you wings on the rear wing. Got the, rear, the red bull along the side there, along the tops of the side pods, the bull horns there. And once again, the top of the chassis showing off the decal, as you'd expect. And down on the nose there. Front wing is a bit basic compared to today, but hey ho. We've got the nice Michelin tyres there, typical of a mini chance with their tyre design. And back at the other way. So not really much else I can point out on this car. I mean, I've done looks around all over the place. Just look, look through the rear wing again. 
mean, this car does have, I mean, it does have some pretty big uh, rear, rear wing end plates as well. I haven't really looked at them. So there's the rear wing. Don't have much on there. So it's the uh, paint streaks. But, uh, so yeah, I think you've also got a, a small fin here as well. See the um, the shark, well, not the shark fin, but the fin of the rear wing. I think there may have been a wing there that attaches across the top of the uh, scoops here, but I'm not sure. I know they did use it throughout the season at various races, but I'm not sure if this model actually had their wing to go and attach to this piece here. I don't know, I haven't got another tyre rotter to compare it to, but uh, maybe it's just a leftover from the uh, Red Bull, the 05 Red Bull. I do have the 05 Red Bull, I'm just trying to look at it on the shelf, I can't quite put my eyes to it. But uh, I will review that one as well, it's, it's, up, it's up there somewhere, I mean, there are plenty of them up there, I'm just trying to work out where they are, I mean they're up there, it's either up there or it's over there. Or down there, or maybe down there, I'm not sure. It could be anywhere. But uh, I shall have to dig it out and uh, have a separate review for that one. Um, but I've, also, I've already done one Toro Rosso, and that was the 08 car, and that was uh, Sebastian Vettel's car. But uh, yeah, that uh, was another day and another time. But uh, never mind. Uh, get back to the Toro Rosso here. Price wise of this car, I'm not sure what you're going to pay, pay for it. Like I said, it's a bit of an, en an enigma with this car. Um, you could pay ridiculous amounts of money if it ever comes up on the market because it's so rare um, and there's, I can't really say much more about it than that it's uh, a rare model but definitely one to get it looks stunning and it's part of Formula 1 which is no longer there I mean this is the last of the V10 Formula 1 cars and uh, it's a piece of history really but uh, anyhow that's the way things progress and uh, I don't see a way back at least not in the next few years anyway, but uh, never mind. But anyway, that's my review, um, and I will return with another review. So this is Rich, signing off, logging off, disappearing, and I shall, like I said, return with another review. So uh, bye for now.